Some people get to choose the members of their squad, but Rick Flagg has to learn to make the best of the worst. Unless one of you does something stupid. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we will explore the comic book origins of the Suicide Squad's Rick Flagg. The name's Flagg. Colonel Flagg. Colonel Flagg. You're kidding, right? As with most comic book characters, there are often reimaginings and different versions to a character's past. We have chosen to primarily follow the storyline which unfolded in 1959's The Brave and the Bold No. 25, which was expanded upon in 1986's Legends No. 1 and 3, 1987's Secret Origins No. 14, and 2008's Suicide Squad No. 4 to 5. Who are you? What is this? You can't just come in here. Rick Flagg was one of the founding members of the original Suicide Squad, a group of four brave individuals who started taking on dangerous missions in 1959. In their debut adventure, it was revealed that each of the four members had promised to carry on the work of colleagues who had sacrificed their lives for others. Some of us don't have to be blackmailed into serving their country. In the case of Colonel Rick Flagg, that sacrifice had come when he was flying a plane during World War II. Flagg had watched as his fellow airmen had nobly acted as decoys so that he could fly in and bomb an enemy carrier. Vowing to carry on, he continued to make his dead colleagues proud through his missions with the Suicide Squad. You're a good soldier. Your father would be proud. Ma'am. He also made other sacrifices. He and fellow squad member Karen Grace were clearly in love. However, they refrained from getting involved, afraid that their forming of an attachment would interfere with their ability to risk their lives for the squad. Can't be helped. It's all part of the big picture. When the Suicide Squad, or Task Force X as it was also known, was reactivated in 1986, Colonel Flagg was once again chosen to lead it. But this would be a very different squad. Flagg would now be in charge of a ragtag group of individuals with dubious backgrounds and loyalties. The likes of Captain Boomerang and Blockbuster were both offered pardons for their past criminal offenses if they undertook missions with the squad and survived. A year after their reactivation, the squad got a new origin story. In this retelling, Captain Rick Flagg was again haunted by a desire to honor his fallen friends through deeds, but his activities with what is now called the Suicide Squadron started while World War II was in full swing. In addition, the members of the squad were made up of soldiers who were, to put it lightly, not inclined to obey orders. When this squad was disbanded in the 1950s, Flagg married and had a son, Rick Flagg Jr. When little Rick's mother died saving him from an oncoming car, he felt the same sense of responsibility to, you guessed it, carry on as his father did. That responsibility was compounded when his father died soon after on a mission to save people, making Junior into the new Rick Flagg. Copy that. You heard the man. We're on the clock. As an adult, Rick Flagg Jr. became the leader of a new Suicide Squad, and as before, fell in love with his colleague, Karen. Unfortunately, the two other members of the squad also had feelings for her as well. When these two eventually sacrificed themselves for Karen, the guilt drove a wedge between her and Rick. Rick then spent some time with a new group called the Forgotten Heroes, before signing on again as part of the new Suicide Squad. No big deal. More changes to Flagg's story came about in 2008. Soon after having fathered a child, he made a startling discovery. It turned out that the original Rick Flagg had died without having a son. The man who had been carrying on the name was in fact a soldier named Anthony Miller. He had been brainwashed by a General Wade Ealing into believing that he was Rick Flagg. The news was unsettling to say the least but it ultimately didn't affect Rick's desire for a life of self-sacrifice. What's that? It's a destruct switch. I'm sorry, Jordan, but you knew the risks. A team like the Suicide Squad requires a strong leader, one who has a solid moral code and a firm belief in his actions. In all of its various incarnations, Flag has provided that. The man was born with a sense of responsibility and has never faltered in doing what is asked of him. So that's it, huh? We're the Patsies. We're some kind of suicide squad. Are you a fan of the commanding Rick Flagg? Shut your mouths and get your mind on the job. For more comic book origins, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com.